Good morning, welcome back to Boisterous Cock Farmstead. So I'm in the middle of my chores today. I have fed the uh, fermented grain to my market pig and his uh, grow out companion, but I have not fed to the other groups, so they're screaming at me a little bit. But I wanted to I'm, I'm starting the process. I need to kind of write down a few notes and everything like that so it's more presentable. But here before too long, um, I'd like to actually put together a showcase much like I did with my Icelandic chickens. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but I want to do a highlight or a showcase on the American guinea hog. Okay, there they are. And... The reasons why I actually really like them uh, for my particular area, but also some of the cons, if you if you don't raise them in a way that's good for them, what some of the problems will be uh, that you might experience. And uh, so look for that coming pretty soon. But this guy is going to the butcher here in a couple days. So I've been planning out how I'm going to rotate, move a few groups around. Uh, I've got a couple, two, three pigs over in my main herd area that they're just not gaining uh, weight. And part of it is because I only feed a couple times a day for them. And it's mostly just hay. And so they have smaller stomachs, I believe, is the, is the issue. And so my bigger pigs are... are holding very well uh, but my smaller ones i think just because of the small stomach they can't ingest as much uh, whereas if they were out on say an open pasture they'd be able to graze all day long so i'm going to get them out of that competitive environment bring them over here and i'm going to still feed the same amount of the fermented grain and it's just gonna it's gonna be split between the three groups but it'll just be a little bit different uh with getting rid of this with getting rid of this big market pig so um as i said i've i've already mentally prepped for that but here tomorrow i'll be loading the market pig up into my trailer and i'll be moving everybody around after that and uh i'll bring you guys along for some of that uh, but the biggest thing is look forward to the American guinea hog showcase or profile or whatever you want to call it uh, That's gonna be coming out soon
<laughs> All right, so I finished doing my other chores other than just letting the chickens out. Um, but I wanted to talk about this pig because I'm only going to have him for a couple more days. Show what it is that I personally am looking for when I'm growing these pigs out. And hopefully this is helpful to you guys. All right, so I'll, talk, I'll try to talk up, I'll talk louder so you can hear me. Um, but this guy, he's almost three years old. Uh, this is actually his second time being in the finishing pin. I used him when he was younger, much like I'm using this other uh, pig as a companion pig to some other ones that I was growing out. So he actually grew out uh, to his current frame size roughly uh, when he was about 18 months and then he was a bit of a test he was a bit of a test out on the pasture to see how well he would maintain and he actually maintained quite well um, if I was in a pinch and I needed to send one to the butcher he was always my top of the list uh, but this particular customer wanted the biggest pig that I could could grow out uh, with uh, one month uh lead time and so uh this was the one that i chose and some of the reasons he's got he's got good length this one he's about 43 inches from the middle part of his ear to the base of his tail he's also about 43 inches around uh he might be a little bit bigger than that right now but if you look under his under his jowls, he's not super fatty under the jowls. He does have some jowl, uh, but he's not super fatty. Right here, I can still see indentation where his shoulders are, where his hips are. Um, and so, the with with the past ones that I've grown out, this should leave about a three quarter to a one inch thick um, cap on my pork chop if my customer decides to keep the, the fat on the chop um, and he will probably dress out hanging weight at around 135 140 is what I'm estimating um, that's based on the calculation that I've used before which is the circumference around their ribs um, squared times their length and then you take that, you divide it by 400, that'll give you an approximate live weight. And then for the guinea hogs, um, I multiply that by 0.7 to get the carcass weight. That's been a formula that has worked pretty good. Uh, I've usually been within five pounds, if not nailing it right on the head. So, and that's with the head, um, no hooves. So they cut them, cut off the legs about halfway down and uh, no internal organs so that's what that's what constitutes the hanging weight from that you may not use the head you may not use the fat around the kidneys which is the leaf lard um, but that could be usable so everybody's different as far as what they want to take on and try to use i've never actually made a head cheese or anything um, so that may not be a value to you, um, but it, is, it could be for a customer or whatever. So he's got decent muscle I can feel on his, on his sides there. He's not, uh, he's not bloated. He's not pouring out right now. He's full because he's been eating, but um, overall, he's not overweight. He's got some good fat to, to give flavor to the meat but he's not gonna be, you know, half fat or 40% or fat or anything like that, which is what you have to really be worried about with this breed. And I'll go into that in more detail in my, in my showcase of the guinea hogs. But he is pretty much the typical market pig that I'm trying to raise. Um, they're not a big pig, so you don't have to worry about, you know, having an entire freezer and the the customer that i have for this is actually two different families and they're going to split this pig so they should be able to just put his meat into uh, a small chest freezer 
or if they've got a full side-by-side -side freezer um, it might fit into there depending on what kind of cuts they end up deciding on um, they may have a large piece or whatever but uh, one thing I do not recommend is I don't recommend um, curing the bacon on this breed it's not a great bacon breed um, but you can have the belly sliced up into what's called fresh side and what you would do then is you would just use it um, and season it when you cook it with the whatever salt you want to have and so it won't keep as long in the fridge in the refrigerator once you thaw it out but um, you'll get that that flavor in the, that bacon substitute or whatever um, and if you want to chop it up into smaller pieces it'd be closer to like a, a pancetta or something like that uh, obviously the salt will be up to you uh, to add in whatever other seasonings you might want to use pepper or, or herbs or whatever but anyway um, and you can see how calm he is um, I'm in here he's he's eating and you know he's he's perfectly content being distracted by food I can come in here and uh, pretty much any time I've got confidence with with any of my animals with exception of my big boar um, he gets a little bit more territorial and one one of the reasons I believe that is is that I didn't I didn't raise him from a piglet all the ones that I've raised from piglets um, even when they get to be a th um, I've got one that's almost a three-year-old boar and he'll just he'll lay down and let me scratch his belly he's shown no signs of aggression whatsoever so a lot of that has to do with um, how they're handled at a young age I believe and uh, some of its temperament but the ones that I've got are his offspring so that temperament is probably being passed along if there is a problem and I haven't I haven't experienced that with any of my with any of my offspring that I've raised so and again if you haven't seen this one here is actually half guinea hog and half duroc um, so I'm raising those out I'll be butchering a couple of those here in the next few months and I'll keep him this is the boar I'll keep one of the females um, I'll keep probably the one that's the more muscular compact version but uh, he seems to be content being around me as well he's a little bit skittish at times but I also didn't spend a whole lot of time with them when they were when they were babies but just enough to where I can handle them and everything like that so um, so that's gonna do it for this portion here and uh, I'm gonna go let my chickens out so they're not fussing at me anymore and uh, we'll pick up with some other segment probably here uh, for the rest of this video so for those of you that have been keeping up with uh, recent events here, um, I've been complaining about one of my cats eating eggs. And uh, although it's starting to get a little sunnier, we're getting more production, I really don't like the behavior. And this right here is taking it to a whole new level for me. So what is going on is she is stealing them out of the coops now and she's finding a little spot and then she's eating them so if there's any question of whether she was stealing or not this pretty much answers it i don't think it's related to any chickens and what i'm mainly concerned about is i don't want her teaching the other three cats that we've got on the property how to steal eggs because then my losses go up exponentially so this could be the final straw in her being we'll just say ousted from the farm if it does happen i haven't decided how that's going to be carried out but i'm not too happy with her right now and of course she's in there taking a nap in the trailer acting like nothing's happened she acts guilty when I confront her about it she runs off and none of the other cats even um, they don't even seem bothered if I if I 
ask them about it and uh, if cats are anything like dogs in that respect um, the guilty party pretty much lets themselves be known by their uh, their reaction to your voice or whatever so she knows what she's doing is wrong apparently she can't help herself we'll see what needs to be done I guess Not a good decision to have to make, though. <laughs>